Hello and welcome to Experience League Live. Let me see. I just see my camera is a bit mixed. Oh my god. Very professional today. Sorry about that. There we go. You can see me. Yay. <laughs> Well, welcome to Experience League Live. Great to have you with us today. I'm Sandra Hausmann, Senior Technical Marketing Engineer, and I'm with the Digital Experience Product Enablement Team at Adobe. And I will be your host today. Feel free to ask any questions in the chat at any time. We will try to address them during the session. And let's give this a try. Let us know from where you are joining us this morning, evening, afternoon, depending on where you are. Today, my guests will be introducing two new journey optimizer features, the web channel and experimentation. But before I ask them to join us, and since you are on YouTube, if you're joining us live, which you are at the moment, of course, but this is also going to be recorded. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Experience League, it is the one-stop shop for everything self-help for the Adobe Experience Cloud application. So it's where you can find product documentation, video tutorials, courses. Of course, the recording of the Experience League live events will also be available on Experience League. And last but not least, very important, if you would like to share your knowledge or just discuss topics with your peers, experts from Adobe um, visit Experience League community forums. We also have a follow-up session uh, to this session next week, Wednesday, June 22nd, in the community forum, the Journey Optimizer Community Q&A Coffee Break. So for all of, all of this, simply go to experienceleague.adobe.com. And now, without further ado, let me welcome my guests. First, joining us from Switzerland, Basel, from Basel, Switzerland, sorry, beautiful city, Robert Calangio. Welcome, Robert. Hey, Sandra. It's great hey. to be here. I'm really happy to have you today. And um, Robert, your senior product manager here at Adobe. Let's get the others in and then we'll talk a bit. And my second guest joining us from Berkeley, California, Eric Wiener, Director of Engineering. Hi, Eric. Good morning. Hello. And now, last but not least, Daniel Christian Popescu, Senior Software Engineer. And Daniel is joining us from Bucharest today. Good evening, hey. Daniel. Hello. Good evening. Hi, Sandra. Thanks for, uh, for the invitation. Hi, guys. Yeah, so it's so great to have you guys here with me today. Um, so let's introduce you uh, so that our um, our listeners, our watchers from, oh my God, we have Ryan from Seattle, Robert from Milwaukee, and Eve from California. So um, yeah, let me start with you, Robert. Uh, you told me that you played professional volleyball in Romania. How did you get into volleyball? Yeah. And when, how yeah, old were you guess... when you started? I, I started, I guess I was like uh, 10 years old or something like that. And I played uh, up until I finished uh, university. Then I, I took a pause for a couple of years and then returned to play like amateur leagues and stuff like that. Uh, you mentioned, so it, you mentioned it, you were it's in my blood. <laughs> You mentioned you were also a national beach volleyball champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, back in high school, uh, I won the national championship. Uh, so, wow. Wow. which was pretty awesome. cool back then. Yeah, and I, I, I still enjoy. I think I enjoy most uh, now beach volleyball because it's easier to to set up and easier to find uh, <laughs> like four players to instead of like twelve to to do like a regular game. So. Are there are there good beach volleyball places in Basel? I mean, I know they don't have necessarily uh, have beaches, I, but uh, except I, for on the Rhine, I've maybe. Heard they, yeah, yeah, I've I've heard there are, but I haven't tried them. I I moved here uh, under a year ago, a, a year ago, so I haven't uh, tried them yet. But I'm planning to do so this summer. So awesome! Let us know. Um, Robert, let's talk a bit shop. Um, you're a senior product manager here at Adobe and um, tell us a bit what you're working on, uh, what you do at Adobe. Yeah, so I'm with Adobe uh, like since 2008. 
if I'm not mistaken, or 2009. Uh, I had different roles in different projects, uh, but uh, in the last, I don't know, four years, I worked on Adobe Target. And uh, since two years ago, or almost two years ago, I'm working also on Adobe Journey Optimizer. And on, Ad on Adobe Journey Optimizer, uh, I'm leading the web channel track and uh, a couple of other initiatives, mostly related to inbound channels, inbound marketing and so on. Okay, perfect. We'll talk more about inbound marketing and why it's important. But let me um, come to you, Eric. Uh, you hinted that you are a self-proclaimed bagel connoisseur. What is your favorite bagel? Well, <clears throat> I, uh, I don't go for anything fancy, you know, keep it simple, poppy, sesame, give me any seed. That's, nice. that's my favorite. And, and what do you put on your bagels? Just, you know, cream cheese, occasional lox, keep it simple. I'm getting hungry here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll ask our guests, if you have a favorite bagel or something favorite that you like putting onto your bagel, put it in the chat. I'd really love to hear that. I love some ideas. Um, Eric, you mentioned something about Montreal style. What is that? When we chatted last time. Montreal style. That's like uh, where the bagels are wood fired and they come out with a little bit of a, a, a sweeter taste. Uh, so oh, wow. I think it's, it's pretty unique. Okay, it's it's official. I'm hungry. <laughs> so, Eric, um, tell us um, about what you do at Adobe and um, yeah. how you were involved in the in the latest products that we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, so I've I've been with Adobe for about four years. I've uh, been leading a team that works on Adobe Target, and over the last couple of years, we've been excited about being able to launch uh, some exciting new features in Adobe Journey Optimizer, uh, web channel and and uh, some other fun things. So um, excited to talk about it today. Fantastic. We're looking for, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. Okay, last but not least, Daniel, what is your favorite bagel? Let's start with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, the biggest one? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Got that. laughs> there's not there's um, not much of a bagel history here in Romania, so I don't really know. <laughs> okay, if if I make it to Romania, I'll bring you a bagel or two. Thank <laughs> I you. I have not been to Bucharest, so I had I some good bagels in Cupertino in in US, so <laughs> a, a few okay, years back. Good. So. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So Daniel, apart from being a tech enthusiast, which probably also comes a bit with a job, um, you yeah. told me that you're an amateur music producer. Um, tell us what kind of music do you produce and on what platform? Is there any way where we can actually hear? Oh, music no, that I, I'm not. I'm not confident enough to share that with you yet. So <laughs> you, you'll have to wait about that for, for that. But mostly uh, electronic music, like uh, nice. melodic house and techno stuff like that. Wow. Cool. Well, when yeah. you're when you are confident, I'd love to hear it. So please do share it with us. I'm just trying to inspire the kids at this point. So, <laughs> how old are your kids? Uh, six and four. Six and four. Yes, that's a good time. That's a very good yep. time to get into music. Okay, and um, Daniel, what do you do? Tell us a bit about um, what you do at Adobe. Your involvement in the in the two products we'll be talking about today. Yeah, so I've been with Adobe for 13 years now, and I've switched a lot uh, of a few teams in the in the past years. But now I'm only f I'm mainly focused on Adobe Target and now Journey Optimizer. Uh, and I'm a full stack developer, so working on front end bits and back end bits, but mostly for front end in um, in the last years. So yeah, everything you see in the interface of Target or now Journey Optimizer web channel has something to do with, 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 with what I do on a daily basis. Fantastic. Fantastic. Really happy to have you with us. Let's Thank dive you. in. Um, Robert, I'm going to throw the first question to you. 
web channel, yeah. new, exciting. Why is it important to have the web channel in AJO since we have the email channels? We just recently uh, released in-app push uh, SMS. Isn't that enough? Why, why web? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic question. So first of all, I'm, I'm super excited to, to have web channel, uh, generally available in journey optimizer. And uh, why is this important is because like, uh, if you think about uh, any customer, uh, their web properties are a major uh, part of their uh, marketing or campaign efforts, right? So having web along with all the other channels available in a single tool, like it's a, it's a true differentiator for, for journey optimizer. And uh, uh, like going back a bit of why it was important and why uh, we wanted to have web is that uh, we did a lot of uh, customer interviews and uh, user feedback sessions. Uh, and what we learned is that uh, the customers or most of the customers right now are using different tools for doing outbound versus inbound personalization, optimization and experimentation. And um, now having all this uh, inbound and outbound channels available in HEO, including in-app and web, what we're doing is that we're bringing together the focus of, of personalization in a single solution. So we now can let customers consolidate and align channel-specific marketing teams and we empower them to create like consistent omni-channel experiences that span across all their channels. So one of the main use cases is really the one-on-one the -on -one personalization that our customers are aiming for. Yeah, I think, I think that's the, that's the main one, like one-on-one -on -one personalization, but, uh, you can also do like testing and optimization. You can do, uh, you can build up onboarding experiences and, uh, and so on. Um, what we, what we wanted to do with web, uh, is to introduce it in such a way that it's easy to set up uh but it's also powerful and flexible uh by allowing uh, marketers to author every aspect of of the their website using uh, a full-fledged visual editor so we will we will see that in the in the demos but uh, that uh, so, that was the goal so um the virtual editor are there any prerequisites is there anything specific i need to install and able to be uh, in order to be able to use it or do i just have ajo and i can get started uh i think there are two main things like uh you need to have uh, the ap web sdk uh implemented uh it's a regular implementation nothing uh, uh specific for for ajo uh, and uh, to be able to author your website, load it in uh, the Journey Optimizer Web Visual Editor and modify it, uh, you would need uh, a browser extension. Uh, Daniel will get into more details uh, explaining why we need this and, uh, and so on. But I think uh, top of my head, these two are the uh, prerequisites. Then, Daniel, let me move to you. I know you're going to show us uh, the web channel today. Let's let's dive in. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me just uh, share my Chrome window here. So, yeah, like um, Robert just mentioned, uh, in order to be able to author your uh, your website inside AJO, you would need a Chrome extension installed, and that's because your website has any uh, website should have, it has security. So you cannot just load a simple website inside an iframe uh, in another domain like Adobe. So that's why you need the Chrome extension to enable that for you. Uh, the Chrome extension is built on top of the latest Chrome specifications. It's manifest v3. So according to Google's uh, documents is the most secure way to build uh, Chrome extensions uh, now and the old ones manifest v2 will be deprecated soon. So uh, you have any uh, every reason to 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 use it. It's uh, um, the latest technology available in uh, 
browser plugins if you want. What the extension does basically just removes some uh, security headers that your website might have, and it only does that until uh, when you load the website inside the AGO interface. So you don't have to worry about that the extension is going to modify your website somehow, and it's going to be available for any other user or in any in other any other flows that you might use your website. So uh, you can just uh, use it if you if you want to install it. It's available in Chrome Store. You just have to search for it. It's called the Experience Cloud Visual Editing Helper. You just have to add it to your Chrome Store, and it will uh, pop up here. Uh, you'll have a, an icon that will tell you. It will be red when it's available, when it's, when it's enabled, and you'll see that in the demo in a few, just a few minutes. Um, if you don't know, if you do, uh, don't install it uh, beforehand, when you try to create a campaign that uses the web channel, the UI, the interface will prompt you to install it and will give you a link to the, um, to the actual Chrome Store page. So don't have to, to search it beforehand if you don't want to. Okay, so like Robert Quick said question. before, yeah. Quick question, sure. sorry. If I'm if I'm on another browser, um, it won't work. I really have to use Chrome if I want uh, to. It, it also works in uh, Microsoft Edge. So if you use Microsoft okay. Edge, yeah, it will uh, it will uh, work. Um, okay, So Perfect. Yeah. Uh, support for Firefox will be available as soon as Firefox adopts the manifestly free specification APIs, probably somewhere next year, but don't don't hold me on that so <laughs> i don't know <laughs> their their timeline okay and um, what about safari what about uh safari? no i don't i don't even have a like a guessing timeline for that at this point okay yeah, yeah. Thanks. okay uh so uh like what robert mentioned but, um earlier you now have a new option in adobe journey optimizer to create campaign that has a web channel. So in order to do that, we have a website here. It's this one. It's actually, oh, sorry. Yeah, this is the one. So we have a demo website here. We have a fictive company called Luma, right? So we're into yoga and stuff like that. So we want to create a campaign on, on this particular website. So you go to Adobe Journey Optimizer, hit the Create Campaign button. And if you scroll down, you have a new option here called Web. Once you check that, all the other options are deactivated because you can only have one channel per campaign. Uh, and you have two options. You have an option to input a page URL or a page matching rule. So what this does, basically, if I select the page matching rule, basically, this campaign will be applied to um, a particular set of rules regarding your website domain. So you could have like a domain that contains something like Adobe, right? And you will have like a page that starts with I don't know demo website or whatever. Uh, for the, for uh, for this particular um, this particular demo, I will use the other option, but this is only also available. You need to, to know about this. I will just use the page URL, which basically means that if I copy this URL here, it means that I want to create a campaign that only affects this particular website on this particular uh, URL path. So I'll just go ahead and create a campaign. And now I have um, a, new, a new screen with some different options about my campaign. First of all, I have um, like a name property. So let's just call it um, Experience Live Demo, I don't know, 1406, for example, 23. We're in 14, right? Yeah. OK. Um, let's put the tag on it. So we'll be able to search for it faster afterwards in the list of campaigns. You also have an option to select an audience for your campaign. Um, I will use the all visitors audience for this particular demo, but uh, you can imagine that you, you can create your particular audience here. So you could have audiences like um, only registered users or only, a uh, only users that bought something in the last three days or something like that. So you can, you can be very creative with your audience here. You can have like premium or standard users depending on your, on your business. I'll just use the all visitors. Um, I'll uh, double check my web here. I'll have page URL. Everything is OK. I won't create an experiment this we, but we will uh, demo this in uh, just a few minutes. And now I have a schedule. So when I want to activate my, cap my campaign and when I want it to end, right? So I can activate it now. Once I create it and uh, once I create my campaign, I can activate it manually and I can stop it manually. But I can have campaigns like uh, I know that Christmas is coming, so I can have a scheduled campaign for Christmas or for Black Friday or Easter or whatever. Uh, okay, so I'll just uh, hit edit content now. 
And what happens now, if you see here, the Chrome extension that I've just um, told you about is activated now. It has access to, the, to this website and it just loaded this website. It just loaded this website here inside an iframe. It's not a screenshot of the, of, of the actual website. Is the is the website itself, so it's interactive, and you can do um, you can do whatever you you want here in it, right? Okay, so I can go ahead and edit the web page. I see the website is now is not interactive anymore, but once I hover over the items in the website, um, I can I can actually select those. So I can select a particular item in the website, and I can customize it. But before that, I want to actually um, go to a particular um, state of my website. So I have the browse option here. Once I click the browse option, uh, you can see that my website is interactive again. So I can go ahead and authenticate in my website. I can click sign in. And once I'm signed in, I can back, go back to the design. So you see that I'm authenticated here as Daniel. So I can go back to the design um, of the website. And you have a lift rail here, which uh, you have uh, basic building blocks, like components that you can use in your website. You have a history of your modifications. And you also have, we'll talk a little bit about uh, cl click track in just a few moments. On the right side, uh, you have properties or options. Let me just close this so you, you see this better. So you have properties about the selected item. So let's say that I, we want to select um, this particular box. And on the right side here, let's say that we want to change um, the background color. So we'll do like a pale transparent red. And now if you look at it, we have a problem here. There's not enough padding, but we can also fix that. So you can also change like font size, text colors, stuff like you would normally change in your, in your particular uh, browser. So let's just add a 10 pixel padding on the top here. And just very, also. very quickly, while well, you can yeah. continue. Um, mm -hmm. For our audience, if you guys have any questions, feel free to type it into the chat pod and um, Daniel or we will answer them. So yeah. don't hold back. If there's anything you want to know or that's unclear to you, use the chat pod. That's what it's there for. Okay, continue. Okay, so I did some changes here, Some just some basic changes. Uh, if you go here to the modifications, you see that the changes that I just did uh, so we can go back now and we can review the campaign in order to activate it. Once you click on this, you'll uh, be presented with a preview. Okay, we just have a question uh, from Andrea. And the question is, is it possible not to use the WYSIWYG and instead use something like uh, the target form composer where you just add HTML JS, CSS, and the text area? Uh, that's a great question. And uh, this is not possible now, but it's something that we have in our roadmap and we've started to work on. So this will come also in Journey Optimizer uh, in a few months probably, or in a later uh, date, but uh, not now. Yeah. Okay, um, so here you can see a preview of, of your website. Again, this is not a screenshot. Is your website actually loaded and the modifications were applied here. So you can see that it's still uh, uh, interactive. Uh, okay, we have another question. Can we just upload the new banner if provided by a graphics team? Instead of that you edit it, just take a new banner? Uh, yeah, that was actually HTML content, but if you go here to edit and you select the image, you actually have an option. If you have some images uploaded into, into your assets, um, you have an option to actually change the image. So you could just pick another image here. Yeah, exactly. It's from uh, AEM assets. Yeah. So you can basically just select uh, an, another image here. And you could use that into your uh, into your website, so you don't have to. You're you're not stuck with your the images that are already provided in your in your website. Yeah. Yeah. 
So Andrea, to, uh, to answer your question, um, this was AEM assets. So that's the uh, yep. embedded integration with AEM. Uh, are you looking for something else? Put it in the chat, bo uh, in the chat box and we'll, we'll definitely- You, 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 you can also that. use like, a, if you have a public URL for your image, you can just input that here in this text field and just use that. So you can have your own CDN if you want and your own uh, uh, hosting, uh, hosted image and just use that if you want. Or actually, there's a, another thing. You can actually use a base64 encoded image if you want. You can just paste that in. <laughs> It'll work. It's not advisable for production because it's like heavy on the delivery side, but you can you can use that. Uh, how about experience fragments? Uh, Robert, that's I don't think we, yeah. That's not yet available, but... Uh... I think uh, a couple of other teams are working to bring this in AGO for all the AGO channels. Yeah, email so just launched a, it, right? It's a separate track. Okay, let's continue. So if you want to go ahead and activate. Yeah, the... yeah. I'll just activate this campaign. So it's like a very basic change here. We see that the campaign is activating here um it shouldn't take long it takes like a couple of seconds to to activate uh, and this page if you if you go here has a um a poll service that interrogates the service once in a, the server once in a while to see if the campaign is activated so you don't have to refresh the page you just have to wait here and you'll see when the campaign is live um yeah so there you go the campaign is now live so if you go back to the website and we just refresh this page we should yeah, we see the campaign that is applied. So the audience is all, all visitors, so I can see the changes that I've just done. But that was like an easy change. Oh, also, you saw that I was logging in into the website inside the editor. I'm also logged in here now because we preserve the same session and we uh, we are able to move the cookies around and keep you uh, logged in. We we have you have the same session across the the browser tabs because of the Chrome extension. So basically, if you have a shopping cart and you have something in the shopping cart, and then you open the website inside the editor, you will still have something in the shopping cart or the other way around. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, okay, so now let's. Um... We have one more question Robert, from I the audience. We have one more question from the audience. Jason is asking uh, with regards to audiences. Um, in target, audiences can come from AEM, RTCDP, or target itself using customer attributes. Is it the same here with AJO? I can, no, uh, no. Yeah, go ahead, Eric. Yeah. yeah, in uh, in AJO, all, all audiences are AEP uh, segments. So they can be batch segments, streaming segments, or ed segments, but they're all defined using the standard uh, AEP uh, audience creation um, platform. So basically RTCDP is, is embedded because of RTCDP is on platform as well, right? Yeah. If we have RTCDP like audiences. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so this was a, just a basic campaign. So let's try to add something more. Um, interesting to it. So in order to edit a live campaign, you have an option here to either stop it, that will stop the campaign or modify the campaign. What modify does basically will create a new version of your campaign, of your live campaign. It will be a draft version of it. You can edit it, you can modify it. The live campaign continues to live on on the, on the production uh, side of your, of your website. And once you're ready to activate the new one, the draft version will move to the live one and the live one will be discarded. So now if I just create this uh, draft version of my campaign, I have a new one. I cannot edit the, the name obviously because it's basically the same campaign, but I can edit the, the content. So once I go here, um, let's say that we want to add something more here to the, let's, um, yeah, let's close this. And let's add some personalization to it. So first of all, I, I would like to add a click track here. Uh, what the click track does, it allows me to define 
elements in my website that I want to track in the campaign reports. And uh, I'll just call this shop button and I'll show you how it works once we click on it on uh, the actual live version of the website. Uh, okay, and now I can also close this and let's add some personalization to this text. So because I'm, lo I'm a logged in user, I can have a personalized message here for my for my visitors. So let's just delete that and say, hey, and we'll search here for some profile from some from uh, some profile attributes. So, hey, first name. So that should be Daniel in my case. Um, welcome to Luma, right? And we'll have something like that. Okay. You see here uh, just the uh, actual profile attribute, um, like the variable name. You don't see the actual live version, but we have an option for that also. And I'll show it in uh, just a few seconds. OK, so we've added some click track and some personalization here. Um, like I said, this is just a draft version. So if you refresh the live website, nothing happened yet. My campaign is still live. It's everything. It's OK. If I go back here, I want to simulate the content, right? Uh, because I, now because I have some personalization here, I want to see how it looks for different users. So I can I can use this option to simulate content. And what simulate content allows you to do is to see how your website would look um, to a certain number of uh, test profiles, right? So let's just um, so we have a test profile selected here. Let's just close this. So we see, hey, Pratik, welcome to Luma, because this is my test profile. But if I select another test profile, should say, um, hey, Daniel, welcome to Luma. Just a sec. Yeah, so hey, Daniel, welcome to Luma. We have that. And if you want to validate this with your marketing team or somebody else, you can uh, uh, you can copy test the URL. So once you click this, you see in the right bottom right corner here that we are generating a certain uh, un uh, basically it's a unique URL for this particular session. So if you uh, if you send this to someone else, you see that it uh, it has. Um, it has an ADB validation session ID here. So basically, this tells the website that, hey, I want to render yourself as this particular user. So because I was using this user when I generated the URL, anybody uh, with the link can see how the website looks for this particular user. It doesn't have to, to log in or something like that. OK, so once I validated this, yeah, please. Do we have a couple of questions? Maybe this is a good mm -hmm. time to answer them. Yeah. So Maddie is asking a question, which I guess a couple of our viewers, viewers have. Uh, what is the difference between AGO and Target in a nutshell? Who wants to take that? I think that's a product question, Robert. Yeah, I yes. can, I, I can take it. And, uh, <laughs> you guys can, uh, can add to it. So uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. and. Uh, since we have introduced web in uh, journey optimizer we we get this question a lot right and uh it's a it's a fair question so um i think that uh, uh like while journey optimizer is gaining uh, web personalization and experimentation capabilities i don't think we can uh uh, compare it yet with uh, with Adobe Target. Like uh, AGO is now mainly used for uh, omni-channel and uh, for running uh, campaigns and journeys across uh, inbound and outbound channels, right? Versus Target, which is more channel-centric. Uh, other major differences are that um, like uh, Adobe Target right now has uh, a lot of depth in uh, experimentation uh, use cases. Uh, we have automated personalization, auto target, uh, product and content recs, and so on. Things that uh, are not available yet in uh, Journey Optimizer, right? And uh, another uh, important uh, distinction between AGO and Target is that, for example, if we take web. Uh, in Adobe Journey Optimizer, we support only client-side implementations like AB, Web SDK-based implementations for web for now, uh, while for target, we support client-side, hybrid, and server-side API-based implementations. So these are, in 
uh, summary or very high level the the major differences now between AGO and uh, and target. We have um, two questions which are, are related. Uh, Ruchika and Amy are basically asking about the customer segmentation and the audiences. Can we use uh, integrate them from Target and use them in AJO? So Ruchika asks, is there a plan to integrate customer segmentation from Target to AJO for our audience campaigns? And then the question from Amy, can we use the audiences from Target? So it's goes in the same direction. Eric, uh, not, yeah, no, not, 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 not currently. There's no, no support for using target audiences in AJO. Okay. And then we have, we have one, uh, two more questions before we move on. So is journey optimizer going to replace Adobe target at some point, Robert? Uh. Is there anything you want to or say or can't like, say about uh, this? Uh, I I don't know. I I uh, like I can state my my point of view without being like Adobe's point of view. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> my my point of view is that uh, we we definitely want to enhance AGO and uh, uh, make it uh, super solid or super comprehensive in all the areas like. Uh, web personalization, experimentation, like content experimentation across the board, uh, having like uh, uh, decisioning, intelligence and so on, and uh, transforming Journey Optimizer into like uh, the, uh, the hub for every customer journey and for every omnichannel campaign. And uh, probably in time, while we add features and new capabilities uh, to to AGO, customers will uh, uh, have the incentive on moving from Target to to Journey Optimizer because they they find more value in Journey Optimizer. But uh, I guess there will be like a, a period of time where these two will coexist because. Uh, uh, you can use Journey Optimizer for like omnichannel use cases, but if you have more advanced use cases on experimentation or uh, different personalization use cases that are not currently supported, you can use them in uh, all together or in parallel. Yeah, so I think we just answered Robert's question as well. Uh, the other question, Amy was asking if Marketo will be incorporated too. Are there any plans? uh i'm not aware of it i don't know eric if you if you know something yeah i don't i don't know if we can comment on that in this group yeah i i would i would not say it's 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 not an option but um it's not something that this group specifically is working on there's another group that would be working on that we should probably do an experiencing live event on marketo sometime soon as well um let me see, what is the case where AJO is omni-channel focused, where target is channel focused? What is the use case, sorry? Robert is asking, where AJO is omni-channel focused and target is channel focused? I think that's just a clarification to what you said earlier, Robert. I mean, I, I think if you imagine uh, use cases where um, you would want to be running an omni-channel campaign across uh, email, web, in-app messaging, where you might, for example, want to run um, you know, the same the same experiences across all touch points and have those be uh, coordinated. Uh, and in the future, you know, uh, run a single experiment across all three at the same time. Uh, that sort of omni-channel coordinated campaign will be possible with, with AJO that's um, not not as possible with target okay perfect let's continue we want to see more so daniel yeah so i was just um in the simulate screen so if everything like i said before if 
the marketing team is uh, uh, agrees with my my changes to the campaign and everything it's okay and agreed upon i can just close the simulate screen i can go back to the review to activate i will just remind you that my campaign is still live and unchanged at this point right so we were able to taste test it test the campaign the new version of the campaign like a, a staging environment if you want so once everything is okay and agreed upon we can go ahead and uh, hit the deactivate button at this point it will tell me that activating this draft will replace the currently live version of this campaign so you better be sure that you know what you're doing just activate the campaign and like just like before you just have to wait uh, for a couple of seconds the campaign is activating now and i'll just wait a little bit once it's activated uh i think there's another question in uh while the campaign is activating it is live now so i can just um i can just yeah, show you so the camp yeah and Please. i let's let's address amy i hope that's okay with you let's address this question um a bit later we'll get back to that question for sure um mm -hmm. let's just continue with the demo where we don't have that much time left so yeah so the campaign is now live i can go ahead and refresh this page so i should see yeah uh, hey daniel because i'm logged in as daniel hey daniel welcome to luma we have you have this me message here and if you if you remember we added a click track here so i'll just click on this um for a couple of times and we can just refresh the page a couple of times because i want to show you that um the reports for the campaign are somewhat real time so what if you go here to the reports uh, the all time report is obviously pre aggregated so you won't see data here in this report um immediately but the last 24 hours report is almost real time so we delivered four actions at this point on this campaign and if we go to the web tab we can see that we had five impressions and two clicks and those two clicks were on the shop button that i've just defined as a click track element before nice. so you see information here you can also see it here and if you don't like this layout you can just click modify and move things around and uh it will be uh, remembered for your uh, for your account in this particular organization so i can just save it if you refresh the page you still have that particular layout that you are um that you like so Awesome. I will uh, I will um, hand this over to to Robert uh, because he has some more uh, advanced use cases to 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 show you for this particular campaign. Yeah, and especially as well, what I what I was thinking is you've you know you've changed you um, launched a campaign and then changed the layout. Obviously, that's something you unless you forgot something you don't necessarily want to do during a running campaign. You want to know beforehand um, which layout will work best. So I think that's where experimentation comes in, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so Robert, please show us a bit about that. Cool. So uh, let me just share my screen. And uh... so in the meantime, while you're sharing, we do have a question. Um, so we'll come back to the documentation question. Um, the uh, why is why do campaigns only um, support one channel? Uh, so yeah, Jason that's... is asking that. Um, that's why that's can a we great question. So, so uh, now we have this uh, restriction in place, and this restriction uh, was meant uh, to uh, somehow strengthen the, each individual channel uh, uh, on our way to adding more channels to the campaign construct, and then adding these channels in the in the journey canvas. But uh, we we plan to open up uh, the multi-channel or multi-action campaigns so that customers can select multiple uh, campaign actions when when building a campaign, and this will will uh, fulfill the omni omni-channel campaign use case uh, without the need of creating uh, like separate campaigns for for each channels. Right, you could create one 
uh, for multiple channels. And uh, while talking about what's next, uh, uh, another thing that we're doing is that we're gradually adding all the new channels that we've introduced, like web and uh, in-app, also in the journey canvas. So uh, in the in the future or near future, uh, in-app will be first to to be on the on the journey canvas. It's it's now in beta, and then it will be follow up by by web channel. So having all of this inbound and outbound channels in the journey canvas will allow you to to build up. Uh, your customer journeys uh, mixing together like uh, inbound and outbound uh, channels. Okay, and do we have any documentation or help that's available for choosing the right tools? I think, as well? I think uh, here our our field uh, consultants can uh, can help. Uh, I'll also reach out to to our PMM and uh, see what what we can share and we will answer back on uh, on the thread. Okay, perfect. So let's get to the experimentation so that we can still see this cool. very, very cool tool. So yeah, what uh, what I would like to, to demo is like do a quick demo of ex content experimentation. Uh, we recently introduced this for all the existing uh, channels in uh, uh, AGO campaigns, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll use web for, for the demo. So I have here uh, Daniel's uh, campaign, uh, which uh, he uh, did earlier. And what I'll do, I'll duplicate this, uh, and I'll say experiment. And then I will open up the campaign. And what uh, I will do, I will create an experiment. So let me just edit the campaign. And here you can see the content experiment option. I'll create an experiment. And uh, what I'll do, like here, you can select the success metric. Uh, by default, for web is unique inbound clicks, and I'll leave it this way. But uh, you can you can choose from uh, a lot of uh, pre-built uh, metrics. Uh, then you can add uh, multiple treatments. Uh, you can define. Uh, the distribution of it, if you want to distribute it in a, in a different way or evenly. And you can also add a holdout uh, if you want for some percentage of your audience not to receive any, any treatments. Um, so I'll create the experiment. And after I do this, when I hit edit content, uh, you will see that in the left rail, I will have uh, both treatments uh, available. So I have the first treatment that Daniel modified, and I can see its changes. Uh, but uh, I also see like a new uh, a new treatment here, right? So um, what uh, what I will do is like. Uh, I will go to the second treatment. I'll hit edit web page. And uh, let's say that I want to promote uh, like a summer sale. And I want to change this image with uh, a summer sale offer. And I go to assets essentials. Uh, and I select my, my offer. Uh, as you can see, I need to tweak a bit the, the layout and what's in there. And I'll choose to delete this element. And for this offer, I want to click track it, how many users click on, on this offer, like some or sale. Right. And let's say I'm, I'm done with, with my changes. I can go back. And you can see that here I have for treatment B the summer sale and for treatment A 
the personalized experience uh, without any any offers. Um, I'll just go ahead and if if you click simulate content, uh, it uh, matters what uh, treatment you have selected. For example, if I have this one treatment B selected, and I hit simulate content, then um, I will be able to see how the experience would look like for uh, this uh, treatment. And if I go to the first treatment, I will see how the, treat the treatment A experience would look like. This one contains personalization. So uh, I can see that uh, it's personalized for, for each profile. Once I uh, done my uh, experiment, I can do review and activate, and then I can activate the campaign. Uh, what I'll do, I'll uh, go ahead and stop the previous campaign so it doesn't uh, interfere. And now I have uh, this experiment uh, campaign, which uh, is activating. Once it's activating, I, I would like to try it out and see how the experience would look like. I'm going to refresh the page and I can see the, the, the summer offer. I can click on it and it re, uh, redirects me to uh, the yoga, yoga offers. <clears throat> so you, you landed in treatment B? Yeah. 50, 50. That looks like it. Yeah, I, I landed on treatment B. I don't know if any of you guys, maybe Daniel so, or Eric, if you uh, Daniel. if you land on I can try. On a different treatment. Uh, we can show that uh, uh, while we're while we're waiting, um, we had the question about omni channel and um, is this uh, experimentation I know is, is available in several cha channels? Um, currently, it's only per channel, but are there plans to be able to experiment and say, hey, um, email works better than having it on the web, or, or we rather have SMS, uh, you know, cross channel experimentation? Is that something that's planned? Yes, um, that's certainly something that's planned uh, for the, for the future I think one of the <clears throat> one of the one of the things that's important to point out is right now what what we've shown is content experimentation so the ability to experiment with different content in this case you know within the web channel and you know we AJ will be able to support uh, content experimentation across channels in the future. But one of the things that you will additionally be able to do is experiment with channels. You know, is it better to use uh, web or mobile for, um, for this campaign? Um, and so that's one of the exciting things that I think is in store for us in AJO is broadening the, the scope of what you can do with experimentation beyond just what content. Uh, yeah, we have the, uh, we have one question from Andre Andrea with uh, regards to I want to pick that up because we're running short on time. Thanks, Eric. I'm excited actually, looking forward to the uh, cross channel experimentation personally. Um, but Andrea is asking uh, Adobe Target offers uh, A4T integration, which is a nice automatic integration with analytics. Does AJO offer something similar? Um, that would be the question. And the second thing is, um, which is related, how do I see which experiment, um, you know, is the better one, which is the reporting on this? I can, I can show, uh, uh, I'll start with the second question. I can show like uh, how a, a experiment report would look like uh, having like a, a different campaign because for this one, we. We don't have enough data, uh, but uh, regarding the first question, like A4T, 
uh, it's indeed uh, super powerful and uh, we, we built uh, along the way a lot of uh, automation around it and uh, like uh, we have a, a dedicated panel in analysis workspace for target and so on. Uh, in AGO, I think uh, the power of AGO is that all the uh, events are landing in uh, AAP data lake and they can be consumed either to AGO reporting uh or to cj customer journey analytics uh, and customers can can build uh, uh, very powerful uh reports in customer journey analytics perfect okay um so i think i can give you probably around a minute can you show us the you said you had a campaign where we can see a report uh yes or yeah, I think uh, yes, we need yeah. to go back to your screen. Yeah, I'll. Uh, there we go. Sure Thank you. Yeah. So this is how like an experimentation report uh, can look like. Uh, like uh, here, uh, it's a widget that tells you if the result is conclusive or not conclusive, depending on on the data that you have, which is the winning treatment. Uh, how many, I don't know, treatments do you have? Uh, what's the audience? What's the success metric? And also you have like uh, the experiment results uh, uh, based on each, each treatment and like the confidence interval for, for, each, uh, for each treatment. So this is like high level what uh, you will be able to see uh, in experimentation report in uh, journey optimizer. Perfect. Thank you so much. This was a lot. This was uh, this is amazing. Both features are absolutely amazing. Um, we have three minutes left. Uh, there's one more question uh, from Jason. So Jason asks, marketers want to sync inbound experiences based on if then else omni-channel triggers such as open emails but didn't engage versus engage versus didn't even open the email how can we use ajo to manage that i think this is one of the exciting things about uh, ajo um, the, the ability to trigger uh inbound experiences like web web experiences uh using the the uh, journey canvas now this is not quite uh available uh, yet but this is this is in the works that so what we showed today is using a campaign to launch uh, a web experience but you'll soon be able to to trigger uh web experiences from the journey cannabis using all the all the power of, of of what you can do um with journey orchestration perfect thank you so if uh if there are any other questions from the audience we do have the coffee break next week on Wednesday in the community forum. Also beforehand, feel free to ask any additional questions. We will also post a link to the community forum on Experience League with this video. So um, you can always reach out to us. And now last but not least, we have one more segment before we conclude our session. Which An unrelated cool tip, and Daniel, you have a, a, a very important tip for travelers to Bucharest. <laughs> yeah, the one was uh, don't ever, ever take a cab in Bucharest from the train station to the set to the city center. You'll visit half of Romania before getting to the city center. <laughs> so just, just get a subway or an Uber and go wherever you need. <laughs> Yeah. I think that that might that might apply to a couple of other cities in this world as well. <laughs> oh yeah, especially in India. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I've I've had it when I was I, I've not been to Bucharest. Um, I think the weirdest experience I had with a cab driver was in Sofia, where I wasn't aware that this meant yes <laughs> in <laughs> Bulgaria, and I was sitting in the cab and asking the taxi driver if he could take me to the hotel, and he said yes. 
And for me, it was like, what is he telling me? Am I going to be at, land in the hotel or not? So, um, yeah, that was that was challenging. It just shows that um, gestures are more important than what people say. But, yeah, that was definitely an interesting taxi experience as well. Okay, guys, we are at the top of the hour. Thank you so much. Thank you to, for, to our audience. It was great. Very interactive, very interested audience. Again, join us for the coffee break. We'll all be there next week to answer any additional questions. Um, we'll have uh, some other colleagues of us joining us as well. And Robert, Eric, Daniel, it was a pleasure. These are amazing features and it was very fun to have you on the show. Thank you so much. And I hope we'll be able to do another show together sometime soon. And yeah, have a great evening, a great day. Um, see you soon. Bye, guys. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a great time. Thanks for the invite. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.